Welcome everyone, my name is Egwin and this week I'm going to give you another tutorial about the spine and how to move it properly. Now, as always, in the description below you'll find the list with all the time codes for this video, but I suggest you watch the whole thing as only then it is guaranteed that you really get a holistic grasp of what I'm trying to show you with this specific exercise. I've done a video before about spinal rotation, we've done a video about tilting the pelvis to the front and to the rear and to the left and to the right. So there is one more very important thing that we need to do in order to cover the whole spine and that's an opening and closing movement of the spine. Opening and closing movement means a flexion, flexion and an extension of the spine either to the front and to the rear or to the left and to the right. So a lateral flexion or a front and rear flexion and extension. I'm going to show you a very simple exercise and give you all the intricacies that are necessary to perform it properly. Once again, what's the reference point or the reference frame for performing this exercise properly? As in all my videos, the most important thing is to create freedom in your structure, to become more mobile, to reduce internal stress in the body and to coordinate the muscles properly in order for a natural movement to take over. Now a natural movement, as I mentioned a couple of times before, is always about how can I move my body in such a way that I need the least possible amount of muscular tension to perform the exercise and still maintain a healthy upright body position and body structure. This will reduce the pressure in the joints, will reduce tension in the ligaments and in general will reduce the stress that's created inside of the body due to misalignment, due to too much tension, excessive tension and so on. Let's jump right into the exercise. It's about an opening and closing of the spine. I'm going to show you the exercise first. What we want to do is this. So that's basically what we want to do. We can do that either throughout our whole spine, lumbar, thoracic and cervical spine, or we can simply mainly do it in our thoracic spine, which right now I would consider the most important thing, as we've done a similar movement for the lumbar spine already. But still, there is no, no sharp um, edge between the two, so will probably work with the whole spine but the main focus will be around our midsection area. What am I doing here? Once again the detail is what's most important in all those things. I can do different versions of curving my spine to the front or to the rear. One option would simply be to let myself drop down to the front. So now I actually roll my spine down to the front, I come back up and I roll my spine back to the rear and I come back up. So that's one option. You can do that more sophisticated. You can say, okay, I take one vertebra after another and I really try to get this rolling motion going slowly. That's one option. The same goes for rolling backwards. That's one option, but that's not what we want to do today. What we want to do today is to turn around 180 degrees where the tension in the body lies. I'm going to explain that when we roll down to the front. The only thing that's keeping us from falling over is muscular tension on the back of my body. 
So when I stand straight, I don't need any tension to balance front and rear anyway, if I have a healthy body structure. Now whenever something shifts out of my center of gravity towards the front, normally I will fall over to the front or to the rear, I'll simply fall over to the rear. The only thing that's possible to do to counteract that is to use tension both on the rear side of my legs and in the back of my spine. Because also, if I use this rolling down motion and I don't use the muscles in the back at all, I would just simply roll completely down to the ground and probably make a roll in the process. Now that's not what we want to do. The same goes obviously for rolling backwards. Now I need the front side of my body to stabilize. I need my abdominal muscles, I need my chest muscles, I need my quadriceps and I need my tibialis anterior and so on. So I need a couple of muscles to stabilize that. I also need my um, psoas muscle, my iliopsoas muscle in order to stabilize when I'm rolling backwards. But that's, once again, different to what I'm going to show you right now. The basic idea, again, is you need to know which command to give to your body in order to get the result we want. The command that you're giving to your body right now for flexion and extension of the spine is an impulse that you generate in your midsection and it's either straight to the front or straight to the back and the vector runs parallel to the ground. So what am I talking about? When I'm standing here like so, my idea is neither downwards in front nor downward backwards the idea is to shift this midsection area straight to the front and straight to the rear. So that's what we're looking for. And it looks like that. And rear. You notice something is completely different in my body when I do that because my head stays high in the whole process. Obviously, when I bring my thoracic spine to the rear, obviously my head will tuck in a little bit because it follows the natural created curvature of the spine rather than trying to stay upright because that would once again create more tension than we need. And the same goes for pushing my chest area to the front, opening the heart area to the front. Once again, my head stays high and it's basically my chest area, my thoracic area that's moving to the front and to the rear and my head and my pelvis and my legs, they are rather the calm part in this movement. Now, what do we actually do muscular-wise in order to make that happen? It's quite simple. The basic idea is to move the central part, you can imagine your stomach or your lower chest area, to move that to the front, release, and to move back that to the rear and release. So literally this forward and backward, that's the intent you have in your mind. What happens muscular-wise is simple. You actually use the muscles in the front of your body in order to push, to open your midsection of the back backwards. So I'm using the muscles of my chest and my belly area to open up my back to the rear and I relax and now I use the muscles in the rear of my body to open up 
my belly and chest area to the front and then I relax again. Once again, if you've watched a couple of my videos, I'm talking about it all the time. It's this basic principle of working and then letting go and let the work that you've just done do something for you. Whenever we do that, you know you're doing it right the second you don't need any additional tension to come back into a centered position. So that's the easy way to control whether or not this exercise is done correctly. Because if I do it with this rolling down motion, you can do that, obviously, but this time I want to show you a different approach. To talk about all the differences would be much too much for this short video, but this time just bear with me, just try this arching motion rather than the rolling motion. Once again, I, I want to point your consciousness towards difference in the movement. When we have this rolling to the front movement, if I relax now, I'll only roll forward even further. Why? Once again, because all the muscles in my back are holding the structure. It's like a bridge that's hung up on steel ropes. The other concept, the one I've just shown you with using the front muscles in order to open the back to the rear, like so. Now the muscles in my back are actually relaxed. They get a little bit of a stretch, a little bit stretching workout, but they don't have to work at all because I use the muscles in the front to create an arch. It's literally like the arch of a doorway in a building where all the bricks are built in such a way that the arch is supporting itself from the inside rather than something holding the arch from top side. And that's exactly what we do here. So, once again, if I roll down, I fall over the second I release. But if I use my front muscles to open my back towards the rear, and now I simply relax my front, my spine will naturally jump back into its neutral position. Why? Because the tension in the front is released and the tension in the front is the only reason my spine is in this position right now. The reason for my spine to be in this position is not gravity. In the other example, in the rolling motion, right now the reason for the spine to bend further is gravity. But we're not talking about gravity in this specific type of activation right now. I'm activating my front, I'm opening my back towards the rear, I let go and the spine will shift back into its neutral position because the muscles and the tendons in the back have been stretched. They use this stretching energy to pull you back up and the front muscles are released. And that's the thing. First release and then you'll naturally float back into a neutral position. Same goes for the rear. Now, if I activate my muscles in the rear to open my chest area towards the front, my center of gravity is still right on top of my legs. I don't move my center of gravity somewhere back there. No. Center of gravity is still on top of my feet. And if I let go of my back muscles now, the chest will just naturally drop back into its neutral position. And this is what gives your structure freedom. This is what coordinates the muscles in the body properly in order to have this openness, this fluidity 
in your movement in order to feel light in the structure again and also in order to get rid of toxins of roughage that's stored within connective tissue and so on that never really gets a chance of being processed once again so when you use that once again it's like an internal massage that you give yourself using your own muscles which will actually massage you at a very deep pace and this change between tension on one side active tension on one side passive tension in the other then release this neutralization then active tension on the other side passive tension on the front side and then again the release this is like a pump and this pump actually increases blood flow increases lymphatic flow and helps with moving more freely on a regular day basis you can use the same principle to move between the left and to the right so rather than letting yourself drop to the left or drop to the right rather use the muscles say on the right side of your body to open up to left side and then let go again use the muscles on the left side to open up the right side and let go again use the muscles on the right side to open the left side and again let go on the right side and you'll naturally float back into a neutral position activate on the left side to open the right let go on the left side and you'll naturally shift back in a neutral centered position just a couple of things very small aspects you'll figure it out while doing this exercise anyway important always use your shoulders last if you use them at all so for the front back movement you can roll your shoulders in or even take your arms to the front but make sure that the arms don't go to the front first and then you try to open but you open your thoracic spine to the rear and then you add the arms to the front same goes for backwards make sure that the movement of the spine comes first and then you increase by pulling your shoulders back same goes for left and right so from this position when you want to go to either side to left or right side say you activate on the right side to open the left side make sure that the left shoulder doesn't start the movement but the movement starts by pushing out from one side towards the other and if you want to increase the effect then you can lift the shoulder in the end but don't forget to let it drop back down again so I suggest don't think about the shoulders too much just take them in account whenever you feel like you want to increase the movement and make sure that the shoulders come last one more thing whenever we do something like that remember that it's most important to focus your mind on the area of the body you want to open rather than to focus your mind on the area of the body you want to activate so whenever as soon as you actually know what you're doing as soon as you told your muscles precisely enough what they have to do then don't think about activating in the rear or something like that anymore then just simply think about opening to the front release and opening to the rear release opening to the front release and opening to the rear release opening to the right release opening to the left release opening to the right release opening to the left release and so on and then you do both sides front back left and right but then if you want to you can add a circular motion or rather something that looks like a circular motion but that's in fact just once again similar than uh, the exercise with the pelvis 
just a combination of frontal and uh, flexion and back extension and left and right so lateral flexion meaning it looks like that it's your lumbar spine is rather calm and your chest area just simply moves on top so now I'm have this, I have this opening aspect to the front, opening aspect to the left, opening aspect to the rear, opening aspect to the right, opening aspect to the front again, and then change sides. Do this movement, especially this rotation, this circular motion, it's not a rotation. Yeah. So, your shoulders, they are always in a frontal plane. It's not something like that. That would be a spiral. That would be rotation in terms of literally the vertebra rotating towards each other. No, it's a combination of flexions that we are talking about right now. And that's a great thing to mobilize your chest area and also to reduce pressure around the heart area because there's a lot of tension stored in the chest area through emotional aspects, through stress, through bad posture and stuff like that. And tension in the chest area or blockages in the spinal area behind the heart, they are always also a very important part uh, play a very important role in high blood pressure or even worse cardiac diseases. Also, when you do this, your breathing will improve, thus giving you a much better ability to reduce and to combat stress simply by breathing. So, all in one, that's a very interesting, very far-reaching exercise. It's an exercise that you can do whenever and wherever you want to. You don't need any special clothing for it. Obviously, if you're running around with a suit, some of those movements will probably be restricted by your clothing. So, but whenever you run around just with a t-shirt or something comfy back home, you can do this movement. It's something that you can do as a standalone exercise or as a warm-up for sports, completely up to you. And you can do it how much you like. Yeah? Say, just to get it moving, you don't really need a lot of repetitions again. Yeah? Just, say, make five or ten alternations between front or rear, between left or right, and then maybe two or three circles in one direction, two or three circles in the other direction. Especially with the circles, Whenever you feel, ooh, there is an area that's maybe painful or where I can't move as smoothly as I would like to, then just reduce the amplitude, move a little bit smaller, make sure to move smoothly, and whenever you come towards a point where it's painful, rather than going through the pain, just shift around and get closer to the pain from the other side or maybe moving in from the other side isn't painful at all. So work on the blockage gently and that's basically it. If you have any questions concerning this movement or how to train it, anything that you want to share with me, how it feels for you or something like that, make sure to comment. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you want more information about natural movement, about the use of consciousness and how to think about movement in order to make it efficient, free and still powerful, make sure to subscribe to my channel. There's a lot out there about consciousness, body, movement and a lot more to come. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. I wish you a wonderful time and see you around soon. All the best.